Hey everyone, I am Ms. Hu, your physics teacher. In this video, we are going to go through question 7 of this question paper. This question is from Unit 4, Electricity and Magnetism, focusing on electric fields. Now in this video, we're going to do an immediate comparison against the mark scheme to make sure that we have written or drawn everything we need to in order to score the highest possible marks in this question. But of course, I'm going to show you first how to obtain the answer. Question 7a. A plastic rod is uncharged. When the rod is rubbed with a woolen cloth, the rod becomes negatively charged. Explain in terms of particles why the rod becomes negatively charged. So for this question, you need to talk about how the particles are able to make the rod become negatively charged. So this particular question is from the concept of static electricity because as you can see they've talked about how the rod is rubbed with the woolen cloth so the rubbing of the rod with the cloth will cause the charges to move and then once they've moved they become stationary which is the static electricity so what has moved now remember that when it comes to charges only negative charges can move because the rod has become negatively charged, that means the electrons, which are the negative charges, have moved to the rod. Where have they moved from? They moved from the wooden cloth to the rod. That's where the rod gains the additional electrons. So that's what we're going to write. So electrons have been moved from the wooden cloth to the rod. This is a two mark question, so this needs a little bit of further elaboration. So why the rod has become negatively charged? Because now the rod has extra electrons, right? So we can say that the rod has gained extra electrons. So let's quickly check our answer against the mark scheme. So you can see in the mark scheme, Two marks are given just for mentioning that electrons move from the cloth to the rod. So this line alone would already give us the two marks. So even if you didn't write the second sentence and you only wrote the first one, you would still get the full two marks. That's what the mark scheme here indicates. So in my case, I've written something extra, but we definitely have already gotten two marks. Right, let's move on to B. So B, figure 7.1 shows a negatively charged metal sphere, S. So here's the diagram. There is an electric field surrounding S. Number one, state what is meant by an electric field. This is a recall question. When they ask you for what is meant by, you need to write the definition. In this case, the definition of electric field. So an electric field is the region where an electric charge experiences a force. If we check the mark scheme, they've underlined two words here, and these two words must be present in your definition to score the one mark. So you must have the word charge as well as force. So this is where we'll get our full one mark. Next. On figure 7.1, draw the pattern of the electric field surrounding sphere S and indicate its direction. So for this question, you just need to draw the pattern of an electric field. Like how you would draw the pattern of an electric field around a circular charge. This is a sphere, so you just draw the electric field with lines as if you're drawing around a single charge. It's negative, so all the lines should be pointing inwards. So yes, you must draw the arrows as well. But how we draw it is, you can draw it coming from all directions. And draw the arrows going inwards because negative is inwards. Should touch the sphere by the way, it's not hovering, you know, in air around the sphere. Let's have a quick check against the answer scheme. So you can see that the answer scheme says that we need to have at least three radial lines distributed evenly around outside of S touching S and not inside S. So 
this is correct. Yeah, we've got the lines outside touching the sphere. But yes, you can't go inside because the field is on the outside of the sphere, not on the inside. That's why the mark scheme is so particular. All three conditions must be fulfilled before you can even get one mark. So this is correct. We've got our one mark. And another mark is given for an arrow on at least one field line pointing towards S. So if you only drew on one and you didn't draw the others, you could probably still get the uh, other mark. But it's always good practice to draw on all the lines just to show that you do understand how the field lines work. So yes, we've got two marks for the diagram. Let's move on. C. Figure 7.2 shows a small negative charge Z placed near to sphere S. So this is the sphere, and here's the negative charge Z. Charge Z experiences a force due to the electric field surrounding S. On figure 7.2, draw an arrow to show the direction of this force on Z. So we have negatively charged sphere S and negative charge of Z. Now, try to recall, what's going to happen to the charge? Is it going to get attracted or is it going to get repelled? That's right. So negative and negative, the charge is going to get repelled. So the force is going to push Z away. So when we draw, the force comes from sphere S. So the line comes from the sphere and through Z. Now, ideally, this should be a straight line. So you should be using your ruler to draw the arrow out. Let's have a quick check on the mark scheme. As you can see, they do state here that the arrow should go through Z and away from the center of the sphere because the force comes from the center and not some random surface, actually. So roughly about center? Yeah, kind of. So that's how we draw the force line acting on Z. And that's how you solve question 7. To find out how to solve the other questions in this question paper, please refer to the playlist in the video description. Happy studying!